Hey, hi everyone. Welcome to episode two of Augmented Marketers. Um, I'm joined by Elena Perol, who's a content marketer at Overly App. Um, so they're an app that help people with uh, yeah, augmented reality experiences uh, with marker based. Um, and today, yeah, we're going to be talking, delving into a lot about augmented reality marketing and also a little bit of NFTs. Um, and she's, there's quite an exciting uh, announcement, um, which I feel like I'm you know, I've got some like exclusive access to this uh, to do with Overly. So um, yeah, so Alina, do you do you want to just introduce yourself a little bit? Make sure I'd uh, introduce you properly. Yes, thank you. Uh, so yeah, hello everybody. Uh, as uh, Rich mentioned, so I am um, here from a platform called Overly, and we're basically a platform where anyone with any skills can create augmented reality experiences. So um, we've scrapped all the code based development. And uh, what we like to refer to is like in a world where everybody tries to be Photoshop, we try to be Canva for augmented reality. So um, creating augmented reality is uh, just as simple as uh, designs in Canva with Overly. So yeah, um, we're here for uh, basically SMEs, uh, individuals, freelancers, anyone who want to create their own augmented reality and it's not out of reach anymore. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's becoming a lot more uh, a lot easier for people to use and it's not this sort of obscure thing that people sort of feel like it once was uh, I'm guessing that's the most majority of the feeling I've been getting um, so yeah we, I mean we spoke before a little bit about your your background so you have a you have a, a degree am I right or a master's in um, augmented reality marketing well, uh, my master's is uh, kind of in marketing and social sciences, but uh, my master's thesis was on augmented reality marketing. So I was uh, looking at uh, especially using it in retail. So I was doing research on what's already been done and uh, looked um, at a context of, you know, augmented reality in different stages. So you could watch a video on augmented reality. Uh, you could uh, then view a 3D model of uh, an augmented reality item, which uh, was uh, Ray-Ban glasses, by the way. And then you could also have an experience where you try them on. And I tried to explore uh, which experience kind of drives action to purchase and uh, what, whether there's any difference. So what was uh, really interesting in my findings was that whichever experience a brand uh, uses, it drives really positive brand attitudes, which is uh, really key. Uh, so, in, in terms of entertainment purpose and engagement, you could use, you know, the cheapest option, which is just, you know, showcasing a video in augmented reality. Uh, but uh, triumphs actually were, uh, you know, very uh, high above in terms of um, actually uh, driving purchase uh, decisions. So people felt more confident. And I'm actually not the first uh, one to find it. Uh, a lot has come out since then. I, I did it. At, uh, 2020 and there was a you know similar research done before but uh, yeah now we for sure uh, how great examples how brands utilize it uh, since uh, covid also hit us and we had to explore ways to kind of sell uh, mm. online better so yeah for sure uh, it's proved itself since uh, since i did my thesis yeah right so do you feel like this is sort of something i've covered a little bit in uh, in the last episode we had actually with kim is that do you feel a little bit like augmented reality is having its second wind? Because obviously the pandemic, as you just mentioned, it sort of accelerated a lot of adoption for AR and for people to do even just do things more virtually. Do you feel like it's having another sort of set, like the second wind? Is that sort of the, the same sort of general feeling you're getting as well? Yes, this is actually for sure. So in terms of like uh, when we started uh, working in the industry, so that was 2014, and then there was this hype cycle where everybody was like, let's, uh, let's try it. Uh, and uh, they did some like things that you would do with novelty technologies just to see how it works. But then uh, people maybe were not utilizing it to really drive value. And now when uh, obviously we had the, the lockdowns and also um, there are like, you know, technology is developing, everybody started also to speak about metaverse, so people are turning their attention back to uh, digital things and augmented reality is not in a high phase anymore. anymore. We now see businesses actually using it to drive conversions, to measure also what's the return on investment, so it's not just like uh, something novelty, something fun, something for entertainment, because 
you know, whatever is an entertainment uh, piece or activity for your audience, it can also, you know, drive volume for your business. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I wanted actually to touch on uh, some research. I think it was from uh, Snapchat. Uh, I was looking at that 92% uh, of Gen Zs, they're actually, you know, expecting augmented reality in e-commerce. Uh, wow. So that's a that's a huge huge number, and as it was more than sixty percent are committed to buy everything mm -hmm. online. So so can we really like uh, not look at it? Uh, we we really, you know, it's the time when when to start using it. Yeah, hundred percent, and that's a that's a really big point as well because I think there's a couple of misconceptions around AR. I feel from the marketing perspective, and you've already covered the fact that people may see it as like a novelty thing, and it's just something that you're showing off and, uh, you know, as something in a slightly new way. But what you're touching on is the fact that it's used directly for conversions. It's used to get more clients. It's used to get more customers and it's used to drive traffic and all, you know, you can use it in a multitude of ways, but a lot of people are using it to make sales. And we're seeing even from the Snapchat um, uh, census, which I also read, which is absolutely amazing. I don't think there's anything as good as that since maybe for this year there has been. But it shows like the conversion uh, increase increases up to like, I think it was 97% from the studies that they've done. So it's absolutely incredible. And the second misconception I feel is that people see it as something that is definitely going to be something in the future. They have no doubt about that, but they don't see it as something that they immediately need to start looking at now because they, I guess, because of the adoption of maybe the glasses is, is what people are waiting for. Like everybody seems to be waiting for something to happen to do it. But one of the messages that I uh, <laughs> preach, that's probably not the right word, but one of the messages I'm sure we're sharing with everyone is like, you're not going to be the first canary down the mine because huge brands and the, all these massive global tech companies are investing billions of dollars into AR and other immersive technologies. So it's not as if they feel like, oh, let's just test this out. They're putting a lot of money into this. So it's like, it's, it's something to look at like immediately, like as soon as you, you know, as, as soon as you're able to. Um, so like, other, do you feel like there's any other misconceptions about AR in marketing or just AR in general, like along that, along that vein that I've not, I've not spoke about? Yeah, first of all, I think I really agree with you with like people, maybe still, uh, businesses still holding back a little bit from using the technology, but, uh, you're completely right. Like it is actually the right time now, because even if uh, AR glasses come out, you know, hardware doesn't really develop as fast as we'd like to. But even if they came out in uh, five years, we have to consider like how many people would uh, adopt them straight away, you know, who would wear them. And when we look at mobiles, it's like, you know, I think it was like five uh, billion mobile users, so more than that, you know, in the world. Uh, and I mean, uh, yeah, smartphones, so camera phones. You know, it's the most accessible technology. You don't need to invest in any hardware. And, you know, sometimes people think, you know, they could do some guerrilla marketing, uh, maybe, you know, uh, put up like, a, you know, a huge event where they would uh, then, you know, be reshared on YouTube or whatever, you know, to go viral. But then you think you don't need to invest in that much, you know, hardware or, you know, do crazy stuff like that. You could just use uh, a device that everybody has on hand. And then you can reach, you know, people simultaneously across the globe, you know, they can do the same thing. So with augmented reality, you know, in Vietnam, as they can do in London, and at the same time, maybe in LA. So, so yeah, we now have mobiles, the most accessible technology uh, there is currently. We should, uh, you know, capitalize on that because if we wait for AR glasses, um, you know, we're not really sure, you know, how, how, but the take is going to be like as, as awesome as it sounds for us that mm -hmm. like really like uh, like the idea so yeah i think uh, that's a really good uh, uh, misconception that you mentioned and then the other one i think uh, if we look at uh, costs because for so long augmented reality has been like something that's you know up there for corporations so we see Pepsi do something yeah. we see you know uh, maybe Disney, Lego, you know, people that, you know, have money, big brands. And uh, I think there is a misconception that that's still the case, but uh, it isn't really. So I, I mentioned already that there is like, you know, other platforms in the market that are also, allowing, you know, even if you use, uh, you know, Facebook, uh, that, which is something that uh, maybe you work on in uh, more, 
you know, you can afford it, SMEs can afford it, and you just need to find, you know, what value it would bring to you so you can measure return on investment. But yeah. but for sure, it's not for corporate budgets anymore. So you don't really, that's also not a reason to wait. Um, so yeah, that, that's a common misconception that I think is no longer um, applicable, really. Yeah, 100%. That's, that's a really good point. And that's sort of something behind the mission of augmented hype is, we're bringing augmented reality to people with businesses online who may feel like there's a bit of a knowledge gap there or there's a bit of a uh, inability to afford it. And really, it's just as common, you know, it's, it's just as uh, doable as creating your normal creative you'll use for your ads. It's just that the life, you know, the, the actual ad fatigue for AR ads tends to be much longer. So you can use them you know, for a much longer period. And also it's a much more immersive and, you know, interesting way for people to experience your brand above everyone else. And it's like super, you know, uh, smash your competitors basically. So I feel like it's, it, that is definitely a really, really good point. I'm really glad you raised it, that people feel like it's just for these huge, you know, uh, global companies and it's, it's too impossible to, uh, for them to afford it. But really all these things are coming out that are making it very accessible to everyone. So yeah, that's, that's amazing. So do you, I mean, the other question I get quite, quite, quite a lot about AR specifically is who will it, who does it work for? Like what, which sort of companies do you feel or brands or verticals or industries, do you feel it w would work best for? Like it, say if you're, you know, so there's, a, there's some, some brands listening right now, they're sort of figuring out whether or not it's something that they could use for their brand. Do you feel like there's certain verticals that it can, it's more suitable for, or is it literally it could work for anybody in, in any sort of business? Well, I think uh, this is also a really good question. I, see, I think in terms of uh, industries, we see that there are lots of like early adapters. So uh, retailers that like, you know, allow for, you know, augmented reality objects to be placed in certain environments, maybe like IKEA use it to sell their furniture, you can see exactly, you know, which color you should get and etc. cetera. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's really, you know, for household uh, furnishing, etc. I think it's a good one. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, also makeup, you know, for, um, uh, we can see face filters and also like, I think it is, uh, you know, a, a quite a few businesses, I think it, both Benefit L'Oreal, they use it uh, to kind of try, uh, and makeup, uh, makeup trials. But then again, um, uh, I think an important uh, thing here to mention is that basically we can use it across really any industry because you know it could be like a manufacturing business that use it, uh, uses it in marketing, for example, because they sell like a massive, massive, uh, I don't know, a piping system that you can't carry to exhibition. So you could uh, carry it with augmented reality to showcase it to, to your potential customers. And that would be one example. At the same time, they could use augmented reality in training their staff. So, for example, uh, how do you, you know, configure uh, certain machines? You could uh, scan it and and, uh, and learn how to do it. So, I think there are, you know, there are loads of applications, marketing, training, etc. And you know, any business has these issues. So, yeah, all businesses need uh, some training done. All businesses have marketing needs. You know, there are different points in customer journey. Uh, it can be, you know, education, inspiration, entertainment, but, you know, you can use it. You just need to uh, know what kind of value it's going to drive for your business. Mm, yeah, yeah, definitely. And and how do you, and, and what sort of industries or, you know, what sort of users would use Overly? Like, and how would they sort of start to learn a little bit more about how they can leverage uh, Overly for their business? You know why? Mm -hmm. I think uh, one of our key audiences actually, so our marketers, as I mentioned, so that's um, across, you know, entire purchase uh, journey of, you know, different businesses. So if it was like, uh, you know, a retail product, they could uh, then enhance their product packaging. And especially in times of COVID where there was like, you know, you used to have all those like live, uh, live tasting sessions or maybe live events once you launch a, a product, but then you couldn't have it. Then you could use augmented reality to uh, maybe once it's scanned, you show like a video of recipe that you could use. So you kind of let customer take you home and then drive engagement uh, from there. 
Uh, so, so I think that was uh, that's a really good example, but it's really along the entire customer journey. So it could also be to drive sales uh, if you wanted, you know, like IKEA places, furniture. You may not be IKEA on IKEA budget, but you're a small business that maybe sells, you know, uh, you know, T-shirts or whatever, and you can still uh, use augmented reality to to make this uh, process, you know, uh, better because AR. But scientific re uh, research has been proved to uh, make people uh, feel more confident about uh, purchasing online. So, so that's that's a really good point. And, and uh, also a huge uh, part of our user community is artists, uh, museums, etc. So again, uh, if you you couldn't. Uh, maybe have uh, guided sessions at museums you had to go individually also during the lockdown so you could use ar uh, to to have like a digital guide for example you can bring art to life then you know museums have archives that are so big and you can never bring everything out uh, but with augmented reality you can bring extra artifacts uh, uh, without disrupting the design so there's uh, like lots of use cases scavenger hunts were a big one also during uh, COVID and also it was a uh, different kind of businesses like you know theaters used uh, scavenger hunts just to kind of keep their customers in the loop keep them engaged uh, with uh, their brand although they could not continue offering you know what they used to yeah yeah that's awesome because I've even seen governments uh, using AR to actually encourage people. This was like post COVID, uh, mainly in the US, I think, uh, and Singapore as well, to actually encourage people to go around and like mix and be more social again. So like certain waypoints or, or certain landmarks, they would have some AR element or some scavenger hunt or some sort of game, and it would encourage people to go there. So it's a really cool mm -hmm. way if you think about a festival, or if you think about some massive social gathering or a or a food fair or something like that, you could draw people, or even like a supermarket actually, you could basically be able to draw people to certain places if you'd like them to congregate certain areas or have some sort of incentive if there's some discount or you want people to go to a certain business. You can even incentivize things. You know, there's all these amazing ways of uh, utilizing it for the location based, which is, you know, like a, I guess that's another conversation. Um, but you, you briefly mentioned art there, and I was wondering about what Overly is doing with, with the whole NFT world, because I'm pretty excited about that world. Oh, right. Yeah, you mentioned the announcement. So, yeah, uh, a few days ago, we announced that we are now integrated with the largest um, NFT market, marketplace, OpenSea. And uh, this one is a big one for artists. So artists actually are, have been the first... Uh, I guess uh, global community that truly embraced NFTs because uh, before NFTs, you know, you could paste something, uh, a photo uh, online, and you know, nobody could track uh, its ownership. You couldn't really sell it, like you could send it and it could be multiplied uh, automatically. So no one really knew what the original. So NFT really changed the game with these smart contracts. Mm -hmm. But then, um, but we saw like it still was a digital item that you could only view through your through your screen, and now with augmented reality, we wanted to pull the you know exact NFT that the person owns, uh, enable them to interact it into their with with this NFT in their own environment. You know that increases sense of ownership. You know we know from other uh, augmented reality research, so people actually enjoy putting themselves in those scenarios. So. NFT doesn't have to be reserved for this uh, virtual reality metaverse where we're like behind the uh, you know screens and we are outside of our natural world. NFT actually can be something that we bring into our world and um, and art is uh, a big one. Yeah, so they were the first ones to enjoy uh, NFTs and then uh, people who buy NFT art they can now place it uh, on their walls in augmented reality, showcase them to their guests, friends, you know, it's a it's a really cool thing. So it's not like, oh, uh, look, let me log on to my OpenSea account and uh, have a look. You can actually be like, like, look at my wall, this is the NFT I own. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about this world. I feel like we could have another conversation about NFTs because it's just the future, I, I definitely feel. Um, but yeah, we, we've got just under a minute and I just wanted to, uh, for you to let people know where they want to find out about Overly, like where they should look or if they want to contact you maybe, like, where, yeah. where would you like to look for you? 
Yes, uh, you can find Overly just by typing overlyapp.com uh, in your browser and you can find me on LinkedIn, so Elena and Overly. And uh, yeah, I'll be happy to chat about the augmented reality marketing and, uh, and yeah, help with uh, developing any projects if necessary. Amazing. Thank you so much for coming on. It's absolutely amazing. But we'll definitely have another call yeah. about NFTs. Yes, for sure. <laughs> thanks, Rich. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, it was great to be here. Thank you. Cheers.